lights it up, scores 17 of his 40 points in overtime, the most points ever scored in an overtime period. Stephen A., what does this mean now for the rest of the playoffs? Well, what it means is that the Portland Trail Blazers uh, have about another day or so before their season comes to an end, first and foremost. And what it also means is that uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder and the San Antonio Spurs are no longer favorites to go to the NBA Finals against a Curry-less Golden State Warriors. That doesn't appear to be the case any longer unless he gets hurt again, tweaks something, can't go, uh, is significantly hobbled, whatever the case may be. He's going to be on the floor, and if he's on the floor, we have every reason to anticipate that he's going to be every bit as formidable as he appeared to be last night, or as he was last night. He doesn't have to score 17 points in an overtime period to have the kind of profound impact that he had. Steph Curry on the floor alone forces you to pay more attention to him, therefore paying less attention to a Klay Thompson, to a Draymond Green, to a Harrison Barnes, who, by the way, hit a big-time three with about 50 seconds left in that game in regulation, uh, not to mention Iguodala and others. His presence alone opens up the floor so significantly that it makes everybody else more of a threat that they than they customarily are. And so because of it, you know, Steph Curry's presence, who's obviously great for the NBA playoffs because we need him. The playoffs just didn't feel the same without him there. Now that he's back, you find yourself salivating at the possibilities of Golden State Warriors against OKC or San Antonio in the Western Conference Finals. And I think the only thing that would, would finish the deal and make it more complete is if Miami beat Toronto and we got Dwayne Wade going up against LeBron James in the Eastern Conference Finals. Having a Final Four of that magnitude in the NBA playoffs getting set for the NBA Finals is something that we should all look forward to. And I know I am. I can tell you that much. This is tough on me, but I'm not going to back off. I, I'm sticking with my Spurs to win it all. I still say they're the number one defensive team. They've got the depth. They've got the, the coaching savvy. They've got the one-two scoring punch in LaMarcus and Kawhi. And they have the veteran savvy and experience to pull this off. The shocker to me was that Tim Duncan turned 40 years of age recently, and it was almost like he suddenly got old. I, I don't get it. I'm told both of his knees are bothering him instead of just one knee that he's been able to deal with. I, I need Tim Duncan to play as big as he usually plays, especially rim protecting Tim Duncan. Maybe he'll bounce back tonight. Maybe it was just too soon for him to come off game three and play a game four in two days in Oklahoma City. Maybe he was being saved for tonight. I don't know, but I need to see a little bit of the old, not, you know, the old Tim Duncan instead of the old Tim Duncan, the Tim Duncan of old, for my Spurs to be the factor and force that they can be. I believe they can beat Oklahoma City in seven games. I believe they could beat LeBron's Cavaliers in seven games. I don't know about Golden State. I'll be the first to admit. My Spurs stole one game against Golden State at home on a Saturday night in which Steph and Clay combined to go two for 15 from three. Okay? So that's the only way you can beat them is that they just have cold hands on that night. After what I saw last night, it, we're back to where we started. I've never seen anything like this. You've never seen anything like this. A willowy six foot three inch point guard, quote unquote, who is unstoppable as a scorer, un unguardable as a three-point shooter. I don't know how you deal with that because that whole team started to feed off him again last night, even when he was 0 for 9. You could tell there was new pep in their step. They got Steph back. And, and again, you get on me when I say, well, you know, what if he gets hurt? I, I don't know. It, it's almost to, to the point where if his knee doesn't bother him anymore through the playoffs, it's just hard to make a case that anybody's going to beat them. Because you and I keep bringing up the fact they've got a chip on their shoulder, as in championship chip on their shoulder, from last year when they felt like they got downgraded, asterisked off the finals because they beat a team without a Kevin Love and without a Kyrie. So they want revenge over, the, they're the defending champs who want revenge over Cleveland. It's not a fair fight. It's like you, you've even got that motivation to get revenge on a team you already beat in last year's finals. It's not fair. Well, here they come again. So it, how can I argue rationally against Golden State right now if, if Steph looks to be pretty close to 100%? He looked, 
He looked just fine to me last night. So if the knee holds up, I'm pretty sure they're going to hold up. Well, listen. <clears throat> what is what makes this all so interesting, Skip? You believe the Spurs are coming out of the West. I Fair do. enough. Yeah. Fair enough. You believe the, the Spurs are coming out of the West. But if they don't, here's what makes this so compelling. Which will is stronger? That of the Golden State Warriors, led by Steph Curry, who are offended that anybody would believe their title is fraudulent? Yep. Is the chip on their shoulder, for those reasons, bigger than the chip on LeBron James' shoulders for having another finals loss, not to mention the fact that he didn't have Kyrie and Kevin Love, and now he will. The combination of Kevin Love and Kyrie saying, excuse me, we weren't there. You think we ain't going to make a difference? With LeBron saying, damn it, I ain't losing another finals. Which chip is bigger? And I just, I got bad news for you. Even if San Antonio wins this series against OKC, I just think there comes a moment in time in the world of sports where destiny just comes knocking at our door and saying, regardless of what your hopes and dreams and aspirations may be, this is what it is. Deal with it, stomach it, learn to accept it, because that reality is not fading anywhere. It is coming. And I believe that if Cleveland and Golden State are in the, are in the conference finals, regardless of who their opponent is, they are on destiny's ride to face one another so we could have something we essentially were robbed of in last year's NBA yeah. Finals. And I think that's what's working against San Antonio just as much as anything else. Okay, my question to you is, is that a chip on LeBron's shoulder or is that an anvil on his shoulder? As in an anvil of pressure and expectation where he says, gee, I can't do that. I can't lose another one. My legacy's looking worse and worse. Is that well, not well, just I pressure? Say, is, is that you motivation say, or pressure? You might say pressure, but I say it could be motivation because there would be more pressure if Kyrie and Kevin Love were available last year. The fact that they're available now, but they weren't available last year. I think that you're looking at them, the chips on everybody's shoulders has something to do with them as well because they want to go out there and show that they're difference makers, that they're individuals that are there for a reason. Kyrie's getting over $90 million. Kevin Love just signed for $113 million. Kevin Love is no scrub. No. He can play. He might be challenged defensively. I think so. But he can bang. He can rebound. And offensively, this brother can put the ball in a hole. And so when you look at it from that perspective and you fantasize about what should have been, what should have been, remember last year Golden State was trying to win and win for the first time and learn how to win. A legitimate argument in our eyes is that Cleveland had a better shot last year of beating Golden State than they do now because if they were healthy last year, Golden State hadn't yet learned how to win, so they might have been vulnerable. Now that they're champions and they know what it takes and they've got that swag to go along with their skills, clearly it doesn't seem like anything phases them, which makes the, the path for Cleveland that much more daunting. So maybe it's pressure in your eyes as it pertains to LeBron. To me, there's pressure on Kyrie and Kevin Love as well, but it can also be a chip on the shoulder because most folks have written them off as a possible dethroner of the Golden State Warriors. And Cleveland might have something to say about that. Okay, I'm going to remind you one more time. Last year, even without Kevin Love and Kyrie after overtime of game one, somehow Cleveland was up two games to one in that series. Yeah. And here's the difference. You laughed and scoffed about this, but, but Delhi did do a pretty good job on Steph Curry for the first two and a half games of that series. Until you opened your mouth. Okay. Yes. But I opened my mouth, but I was just stating the fact of what I saw. Delhi was starting to annoy him no. in games one and two and for the first half of game three. Steph mm. started to get his rhythm and got off it near the end of game three, and it signaled what was about to happen huh? in game four because game four was in LeBron's house. That, that's you're up two games to one with the game in LeBron's house. You, you got to close that deal. You got to go up three to one. And Steph and company said, no, no, this is ours. And that was the end of the series after that night. 
in Cleveland, and it was over in six. So my point Skip is, Bayless. yeah, go ahead. Let's be clear about something. You weren't just stating the fact as to what was happening. You had folks in, Ch in Cleveland chanting, Steph Stopper. And you were egging them on and antagonizing <laughs> <laughs> Steph oh, Curry. Yeah. And as a it's result, Steph oh, Curry God. came out yeah. in game four yeah. and just and, and put that all to bed. Yeah. You specifically oh, incited a bunch of folks yeah. in Cleveland to fun. get so yeah, caught up. Did. You egged them on. Yeah. You antagonized oh. them. You started talking all of this smack about Steph Curry, mm -hmm. and you paid for it. I didn't pay for it. I just stated you, the truth. No, I'm just telling you. I, you I, I no, didn't no. care. You were stating what you were. You're acting like you were just stating what happened. Yeah. You were also stating what was happening <laughs> what, what, and what, what was going to happen. Him? And you were laughing while doing it. I Skip. was. What, what yes, were they calling him? Okay. Deli Trey or something like that? That wasn't that his nickname? Deli Trey. Steph Trey? Stopper I don't and know. all uh, of this other stuff. Yeah. I mean, it was ridiculous. Well, he was it's ridiculous. Steph, he was a Steph botherer. You know what? Deli's a good defender. I don't care what you say. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. He can't stop I like stop Della Vadova. Steph. I know. I like Della Vadova, yeah. just not okay. as much as you tried to make right. me like him. Okay. That's all. All right, but, but here's the point. Bottom line to this yeah. discussion, that Steph wasn't nearly as good as this Steph. That Steph, he should be the most improved player as well as back-to-back -back MVPs. He's gotten way better. We just heard Mike Miller. How did you go from that to that? I don't know, but he did. Mm -hmm. And so good luck to LeBron and company if they face this But step. the current most improved player, C.J. McCollum, he kind of mm -hmm. deserved it too, though. Uh, he's been very know. impressive this yeah, year. Well. I mean, where he came from, the way yeah, he's okay. at. Okay. Yeah, right. you know. Stephen A., you brought up a lot of interesting points in that conversation, but that, I'm glad I got to hear how Skip was working the crowd. Always, oh, my Lord, always you should have seen Always has an it. angle, this guy. He, he put, he put Flavor Flav to shame the way he oh, had them egging, egging them on. It was ridiculous. Uh, yeah, well. We shall see. No least, pressure, no diamonds. That's what your boy says, right? RG3? Yeah, yeah well, oh, at least I'm not picking San Antonio to jinx somebody else's Okay, pick. okay. Oh. Let's take a break from the playoffs and let's talk offseason. Should I stay or should I go now? That is the question Kevin Durant is asking this offseason. But how much will his paycheck impact where he plays next season? The discussion on that coming up next. Stay here. It's gonna be your